Hey everybody, this is the solution video for the first iteration of the new Enterprise DNA initiative called Problem of the Week, where each month we're taking a real-world DAX problem and a real-world Power Query problem and breaking it down in detail. And so I first want to thank everybody who's participated in this. Um, the response has been phenomenal. We've gotten a ton of really innovative, creative solutions uh, to this problem on the forum and just a really good conversational vibe in the community. Um, so I want to thank everybody who has participated. And even if you tried and weren't able to solve this one, that's fine. These are these are fairly difficult problems and we, we intentionally make them challenging. And the important part is really making an effort to solve them, but not necessarily the outcome of getting to a, an actual solution. That Just by trying to work through the problem, it's going to make the solution a lot more meaningful when you do see it. So if you didn't get it this time, um, kind of put it on the shelf for a while, keep working through these and go back to it. And I think you'll find that as your skills improve, problems that were really difficult become a lot simpler. So um, move on to the solution. And before we get into the, the real details of exactly how I solved this, and as I say on the forum, there were a, a dozen or more really great solutions. And some of them I like better than the solution I'm going to present to you. Um, but before we get into that, I want to talk about just generally the, the process and the mindset that I go through and that each of the experts is going to go through when they do their videos to really get you inside their head in terms of how they break down a complex problem. And for me, I, I love writing DAX. I love these sort of problems. And my, my temptation initially is to jump right in and just start hammering out complex DAX. And that oftentimes leads to just a lot of spaghetti code that halfway through I'm kind of thinking, what was the problem I was trying to solve in the first place? And so there's a there's a technique that I want to talk about called rubber duck debugging. And it's it's typically used for debugging, but I, I find it's actually also really valuable for coming up with the initial framework that you're going to use to solve a complex problem. And for those of you not familiar with it, it, it sounds crazy, but basically what it is is using a rubber duck or any any sort of, you know, can be a, a person that you talk to or, you know, just talking out out loud about the solution that you're you're envisioning and kind of developing and articulating a plan for how you're going to attack a problem. And just by the, the mere act of voicing that, it oftentimes helps you work through the problem. And in some cases, in a debugging situation, makes you realize what you're doing doesn't make sense and how to fix it in a way that addresses the problem. So there's there's a lot written on this. Um, I've got this site, rubberduckdebugging.com, that you can look through that's interesting. And um, I've actually got my own duck. This is William. Um, I'm a big bagpipes fan, so I got a bagpipe duck. And uh, William is a, is a very patient listener. So... When I walk through this problem, and we'll pop the, the problem up on screen, and just to review, what this was, was um, we had 10 holidays, and then the month, and then the day. And some of the days were specific days, and some of them were relative days. And what we need to do is come up with the, the holiday date and the celebrated on date. And so as I thought through this problem, here's, here's kind of what I articulated. That... I said, I know I'm going to need to capture the selected year, month, and day name. So, you know, the year from the slicer, the month from the table, and the day. Um, I also know that I'm going to need to differentiate specific days from relative days. So I'm going to treat something like January 1 very different from the third Monday in January. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to parse this, this day field into two components. So there's going to be the first parse, which is the occurrence. So third, last, first, second, and then the day, Monday, 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 Thursday. And those are two critical pieces of information that I'm going to need, need to separate. And so um, normally I would do that in Power Query just through a split by delimiters. But since we're doing it in DAX, we're going to have to do it a different way. So then I'm thinking that I'm going to need to um, to calculate minimum and maximum dates 
for the specified year, month, and day name. So year, month, and then so the for 2027, January, the the third Monday. Um, and so I'm gonna need to calculate a minimum and a maximum for, for Mondays in January, and then work through which one is the, the third month. Um, so once I get that minimum um, day for a given month, what I can do is I can add seven days to it to get to the second Monday, 14 days to get to the third Monday, and 21 days to get to the, the fourth Monday. So that's kind of the, the general framework that I articulated. And I'll work through exactly how I did that, but kind of starting with that, that general framework really helped me um, kind of narrow down the DAX that I wrote. Um, the second thing that I want to talk about, and we can go to my measure here, um, holiday date. The second thing I want to talk about is kind of building in parts. And I find this really helpful in a complex measure where if you've got a lot of variables, you've got a lot of components to this, is to build it out in pieces. And then what I always do is I have a, a result variable at the end, and then my last statement is just return result. And the reason I do that is because it makes it really easy to go back through and say, okay, you know, as I, as I build this out, I can just test, you know, this calc first variable by just changing this from result to calc first. And then I can check calc last the same way. And I don't have to go back and rewrite much. I just change that return variable and it changes it in my results. So I can kind of track through and solve in parts. And the last thing I want to talk about is what I call, you know, um, searching for unknown functions. So in this case, I know what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to parse this day field into two, two separate components, as I say, that, that occurrence and then the day. And if I don't know how to do that, what I found the easiest way to do is normally for DAX functions, I go to the Enterprise DNA Knowledge Base. But in this case, if I don't know what function I want to use, I'll go to my External Tools menu and go to the SQL BI DAX guide. And what it's got is it's got a really nice feature here called cert, actually called groups, where if I go into groups and then functions, it groups the functions by type. And so if I'm thinking about for this sort of thing, in terms of parsing a text string, I can go, I may not know what functions I need, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna be text functions. And what it'll do is it'll go through and it'll give you all the text functions that DAX has. And what you can do is you can you can walk through this and I can say, okay, left, return specified number of characters from the start of a text string. That sounds useful. Length, as I talked about, that's what I'm gonna to use to separate out, whether it's a specific date or a relative date. Um, I can go through here and mid, returns a string of characters from the middle of a text string. That's gonna be useful. Search here returns the starting point, position of one text string within another. So in this case, I can search for a space and then return position to that. So if you don't know what you need, so if, you know, if for example, these were, you know, table functions that I needed, you could go here and see all the table functions. And it's a good way of, if you have a general sense of what you want to do, but don't know the particular function, that's typically how I figure it out. So let's go jump into the, the specific DAX now. And so what I did, kind of per the, the discussion with William the Duck, was I created this series of selected values. So harvesting the dates from the, from the slicer, the holiday month, the month number, and the day from the, the data table. Um, the length from, of that selected day using that length function. And in this case, it returned text, so I had to wrap it in value to change that, that number text to a, a numeric value. And then what I did is I looked at using that search function for the position of the space between, say, fourth to fourth Thursday. So again, using wrapping it in value, but saying search for space within the selected day, starting at position one, 
and returning a zero if I don't find that string in there. And so characters before space is just the space position. So if the space is in the seventh position, there are going to be six characters before that. And then the number of characters after is just the length of the string minus the position of the space. So from that, what we can do is this first parse, which is to say if the selected length is less than two, less than or equal to two. So if that's a specific number, like December 25th, then what we can do is just um, use that number. If not, what we do is we take the selected day and then the, the left function of the characters before space. So what that'll do here is in this string, it'll, it'll look for the space and then it'll take from the beginning through the H and pick up fourth. And similarly for the second one, we do the same thing that if it's less than or equal to two, we return a blank since we've already picked up the number here. And if it's not, if it's greater than two, then what we do is take from the, the character after the space to the end of the string and pick up that Thursday. So at, at this point, we've now got two variables, one representing the occurrence, one representing the day. And then what we can do is just a, a fairly basic calculate min where we take the filter off dates, the dates table, and then we apply the filters of the selected year from the slicer, the month name, and then the, the day of the week from that, that second parse that we did. So in this case for, for Thanksgiving, it would be 2027, because that's the, the year from the slicer, November, and then Thursday. And so what we're doing is we're saying, give us the minimum date of all the Thursdays in November in 2027. And similarly, we do the same thing for the last. And then once we've got all that, it goes to a switch true statement where we say, if the length is less than or equal to two, then all we do is put together a date statement that says the date is the year, the month, and the day. And that's our specific dates, like December 25th. If it's not a specific day, then what we do is if the occurrence is that first parse says first, we take that minimum date. If it's second, we just add seven to it. Third, we add 14, fourth, 21. And if it's the last X in a given month, we just take that maximum. And then we just return that result. So that is, that's the way I did it. And one of the, the advantages of this is that I tried to write this in a way that didn't use anything specific about the particular holiday names. And it's, some of you did do that and that's absolutely fine. That was within the, the constraints of the, uh, the challenge and as a perfectly acceptable way to do it. Um, what I tried to do in this one was to make it general enough so that if you pulled in any holiday data for any country, it wasn't specific to the, the names of the holidays. So that was my solution. Um, there are some really interesting ones that we're going to discuss in the, uh, the community chat. Uh, I particularly want to call out um, Antrish and Rahesh, who came up with a really ingenious way of using that um, path function, path item function, to simplify the parsing of the, the day field down to one line. That thing that took me multiple variables and multiple lines and some, I would say, fairly complex text manipulation, they got down to one line statement. And we'll talk about in the, in the, the forum how they did that. And so before I forget, I want to walk through the celebrated on measure. Um, this is kind of an add on bonus question. And if you got, if you got to this point, you did the heavy lifting. So this, this should have been pretty straightforward. And the way I did this is just a simple lookup value where I took the, the holiday date that we calculated in the previous measure, went to the dates table and looked up the day of the week name, and then just did a switch statement where we took that 
that result of the day lookup and said if it's a Saturday, then we just subtract one from the holiday date so that it's celebrated on a Friday. Similarly, if the day is Sunday, we added one so that it's celebrated on the subsequent Monday. And if it's a weekday, we just return to blank. And then using that similar solved by parts, I just took that final date adjust and just returned that in the in the last statement. So that's how I solved that. I think everybody um, pretty much did did that similarly, um, but the difference was in how everybody calculated holiday date. So that's my uh, my solution. As I say, we're going to be discussing a lot about the different solutions on the forum community. So um, hopefully that um, that was a helpful explanation, at least of of one way this could be done of many. Um, if you learned something in this, please throw it a like and also, um, if you haven't, please subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. We're going to be putting out a lot more content on Problem of the Week and a lot of the other NRD, a lot of the other, um, Enterprise DNA initiatives. And so, um, thanks again for watching, for participating, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.